Science Explorers. Carrie here from Ghost STEM Explore Science Club. It's a pretty warm one out today. And watching Ian Wilson from the Grand Ronde Model Watershed talk about his stream restoration work, well, it made me want to come and hang out next to a stream on this hot day. So I'm sitting next to a creek in my neighborhood. It starts to flow when the snow melts and it stops flowing about early summer. It's still running, so I'm enjoying it while I can. To explore more about watersheds, we're going to observe our surroundings. So put another way, we're simply going to observe our watersheds. First, you'll observe from a distance, kind of zoomed out. And then you're going to observe close by, kind of zoomed in. Be sure to take out with you a piece of paper and a pencil and a clipboard. You know, a hard book and binder clip works really great for a clipboard. Also bring out a jug of water. For your zoomed out observations, you'll draw a large X on your paper. Where the X crosses, you'll label the four sections, north, south, east, and west. So N stands for north, S stands for south, E stands for east, and W stands for west. These are the four major directions, or azimuths, as Ian put it. So in each direction, we'll observe our watersheds and draw or write what we see. We're going to begin with north. And if you need a little bit of help finding which direction north is, you can get help from an adult. And adults, if you need a little bit of help finding out which direction north is, many phones actually have compasses on them. You could check there. So in the north section of your paper, you'll describe in words or drawings what you observe in that direction. Is there a building or a house? Then look past those buildings. Can you see the horizon out there? What else do you see? Do you see a peak or a hill? And then as you, as you observe in the north direction, can you imagine which direction the water flows? And then start to draw arrows where you think the water might flow. And then think about maybe where the water might end up. You can add all of those details in. And then when you're done, or when you think you're done, look again. Look a little closer. What else is in the northerly direction? You'll do the same thing in all the other major directions or azimuths, south, east, and west. And just remember that south is opposite north, and east is where the sun rises, and west is where the sun sets. Next, we'll make our zoomed in observations and see how water flows on different surfaces. You'll find three different surfaces nearby. For example, you might look for a flat grassy spot, pavement, a sloped grassy spot. What you'll do is you'll pour water over each surface and observe what the water does. So does the water soak in? Does it flow over the surface? Does it do a little bit of both? Be sure to write down your observations or draw your observations. You can use your I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of skills, so that you can share your observations with other science explorers later. As we learned from Ian Wilson's video, a watershed is the area that drains from ridge top to ridge top. Now, even if your ridges aren't very high, there are still places on the land that rise and fall a little bit. And regardless of where you live or travel in the world, every step you take is in a watershed. Watersheds are like branches of a tree. We might live on one branch, like the Wallawa River watershed in Ian's case, but we also live on the tree. 
which for Ian is the Columbia River watershed. Tell you what, you might hear some birds in the background. There are these sweet little, two little yellow finches flying around. It's really sweet. So back to watersheds. The small branches, like the Wallawa River, are called tributaries. And the trunk of the tree is called the main stem. No pun intended. And the main stem in this situation is the Columbia River. So many of us in Eastern Oregon do live in the Columbia River watershed, but we're also part of smaller branches unique to our county or town. But some of you in Southern Eastern Oregon live in watersheds called basins. And basins are watersheds where the water doesn't flow to the ocean. Now that's pretty fascinating. To get to know watersheds a little bit better, we're going to make some models of watersheds. So you'll need the following supplies. You'll need a piece of paper, and regular printer paper or notebook paper can work, certainly, but having a paper that's a little bit larger, like 11 by 8 inch paper, would be even better. So what I've done is I've just taken a paper bag and I've cut out one of the sides to have a bit of a bigger paper. You'll also need some tape, and I have some masking tape, scotch tape works, and you'll need some washable markers. Those are just kind of the Crayola type markers, and you'll want blue and if possible, brown and red as well. And then you'll need some permanent markers. You'll need black and then green if possible. Not necessary, but it's helpful. And then we'll have some newspaper laid down and you could also use a tray too if that's easier. And then we'll have a spray bottle filled with water. Step one for your model watershed is you're gonna take your paper and you're gonna crumple it up. And then you'll open it up and you will have created a model watershed. Step two is you'll tape the edges of your paper on your tray or newspapers. Step three, with your black permanent marker, you'll draw lines where your major ridges are. You can also mark where there might be a town or where you'd want to have a town. And if you have a green permanent marker, feel free to write where there are forests or grasslands. Step four, with your blue washable marker, draw the direction you think the water will flow and where you think it will pool or form a creek or river. Step five, now you'll spray your paper. Not so that it's soaking, but just so that the colors start to flow. Take some time to observe if your predictions of where water might pool were accurate or if not so much. Like I'm noticing where I chose to put my towns, there's a lot of water pooling there. Now let's add some brown and red. Use the washable markers. Brown will be soil that runs off hills where there is not vegetation, just bare soil. So maybe where you did not put any vegetation, you can Mark where there might be bare soil. And the red will symbolize some sort of chemicals. Maybe there'll be chemicals running from yards and towns or farm fields where chemicals are used to get rid of weeds or pests. Or maybe the red comes from a factory that releases chemicals and is not taking care of its waste. All right, so once you're done adding your colors, you'll spray again and you'll see what happens. Where does the soil wind up and where do the chemicals go? And how might the organisms and the people 
that live in those areas be impacted by that soil and by the chemicals. Now, the last question I'm gonna ask is, this is a model, it's not the real thing, but how is this model the same or different than your own watershed, wherever you might be? As we wrap up this watershed discovery challenge, I hope you know a little bit more about the watershed where you live, how water flows through the landscape, and how conditions upstream affects everything downstream. And now it's time for you to share your watershed observations and discoveries. Until next time, keep exploring.